forgot we were doing that shit because I was just like I was about to go upload another video. That's good. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. That's where my mind is. It is live. You have to wait for it. It lags a little bit. Oh, now I see it. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hey, bro. Hey. 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 Where's the I don't chat say that. I've I've heard you say "Hey, girl." No, I, I hear you say it. Say it. I've, heard <laughs> her, I've heard her say it. She. I, I definitely heard it. heard it during a League of Legends match. Mm -hmm. That's definitely where I heard it. <laughs> no, well, I say a lot of things during League of Legends matches. <laughs> she does <laughs> very very vulgar things. <laughs> but we won't talk. Number one thing is I rage I, for days. <laughs> was it? What was that thing that you always you're always working to try to get the um the uh. The stun or whatever the fuck that is. Who? You're always talking about? Demi. My snare. That's snare. snare. I snared them. <laughs> I snared them is her number one <laughs> statement. That way you guys can like jump on them. Otherwise, I snared them out. Just... Demi. Demi, I'm about to die. I'm running away. I snared <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. Okay. So you can run away. You're welcome. All right, there you go. Okay, okay, okay. Touche. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, oh, wait. Now, come on. Just come on. All right, what's up, everybody? It's uh, PB Solar Bear here. PB Recreations is doing Ranting Gamers number I don't even know. I don't know, but uh, we're gonna 18. be talking about a few things. We'll be talking about a few things. We'll be talking about a few things uh, that's been happening in the past what two weeks? Give it to That's who we drop it. So uh, okay. right. let me let me let me let me check these out. So let me check, let me check these out. The topic starts for today. Are, um, Don Matrick leaves uh, Microsoft. He peace and goes. He pieces peace for and he goes to Zynga. Uh, pre-orders for the PS4 for at GameStop sold out. sold out, which doesn't make any sense. How does a pre-order sell out? And uh, Christian Svensson, is that how you say his last name? Yes, Svensson. Leaves Capcom. He's leaving Capcom. Svensson. That was the that was the VP, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, GTA 5 gameplay thoughts of how we feel about some Most about uh, <laughs> GTA. Must and Bonus topic if we get to it. Tetsuya Namara, who works on uh, Final Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3, mm. is interested in the LucasArts and Marvel products. Maybe mm. he's thinking about putting that into Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm. Uh, we're not sure. So, um, what topic do you guys want to tackle first? Uh, I would like to talk about um, Mr. Svensson. Leaves cap. All right, let's. All right, well, I'm going to hand it over to Solidus 2. Okay. All right, so viewers, uh, welcome, thank you, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. But um, Christian Svensson was and is the reason why the Street Fighter IV, uh, why fighting games are now popular. Um, he's the man behind the community, the fighting game community, and like most importantly, the Capcom fighting game community. Um, we all know in 2010, Street Fighter made its grand appearance back with Street Fighter IV, but it didn't get its best appearance um, when it first came out. I would say that it was most popular around 2000 and, uh, late 2010, early 2011 when um, when the community grew and was more uh, solidified and that was because of uh, uh, Mr. Svensson and all of his community members that he he had at Cap Capcom Unity working for the fighting games and um, the article that we read showed and said that, you know, he left for, you know, reasons that um, he didn't like the way the company was going, which I completely understand because after the last two I years... I think everybody can understand Yeah, after sure. the last two years of fighting games, you can see that the turn has been, um, I won't say for the worst, but it definitely has not been for the, uh, the, um, for the, faint, the faint at heart because you... The games now, the fighting games are a lot uh, simpler and um, they're... Uh, <laughs> pretty cheap but um, I'm guessing that he wasn't leaving because of the games in general but more so the way that they're being marketed and the way that the business is being ran um, so I don't know do you I don't I do you guys want to talk about this topic or I, I just wanted to inform everybody what was happening with that um I just want I guess I say a little bit I mean I don't 
I'm really bad with names, better with faces. So I don't. I have to see what this guy looks like to even. I don't even. You, I don't remember seeing him, him at any, you at any tournaments. Him. Okay, yeah. You, you would have so, to. You literally to see him, you would have to stay on the Cap Community Twitch. You would have to read their forum articles and um, and listen to their uh, podcast when they're talking about their updates. That's the only time you'll really see him. Um, the face of Capcom Community was Seth Killian. That was the okay. Face yeah, and then that and then that's left. when. He left. So yeah. what? He I guess he was right under Christian, or not really yes. right under. Seth but Killian was under uh, Christian Svensson. All right. Yeah. So um, I don't. I mean, I, what I can say as a as a person who who actually buys fighting games, uh, like say Capcom Capcom Street Fighter is one of my favorite because it's very very technical, um, and as balanced as a fighting game could get that I know of. Um, I noticed you can you can see how difficult or how technical Street Fighter was versus Marvel versus Capcom and in the in the direction that Capcom is going it just seems they I actually even said in an article that they're leaning all their all their games that they're coming out with are going to be leaning towards the casual gamer the casual market so their games are going to be easier it's not going to it's going to it's going to be the same shell of the game that that we once liked but it's going to it's it's going to be the thing that you liked about the game is not gonna it's probably not gonna be there anymore. So it's spirit, I guess, or the soul of the game. The reasons why you liked it, it most likely is not gonna be there. Devil May Cry, you saw what what they did to Devil May Cry. You see what they did to the Marvel. So I can see why he would probably leave. He just his heart's not in it anymore. He's not having fun, I guess. It's just not what it once was. So that's what I have to say about it. Uh the part about it that surprises me is like I'm looking at it and it says that Capcom, it, well, only in the U.S., but only employs about 130 people. Mm -hmm. I would have assumed it would have been more. And uh, now that they're laying off, like that's got to be a big hit to the people that are there. <laughs> yeah, it, and it sucks because whoever's going to replace him has really big shoes to fill with the community because he's, he's leaving at Capcom's high points of their their fighting game community where Street Fighter. Uh, still, tournament-wise, is one of the greatest games tournament. Marvel, bar none, greatest tournament game out right now. Um, what else is out that's... Uh, you Capcom. speak street. Yeah, I mean, and then they have so many games that they're bringing back into their from their collection that, like, their HD remixes, their third strikes, and things like that. And mm -hmm. he was the man that was, all right, so I want this feature on the online part. I want it, I want, you know, this lobby kind of thing. And when when players had gripes about single characters or balancing issues he was the man on the forums or he was the man in the videos saying this is what we're going to be changing for the most part um i hope you guys enjoy it things like that so whoever's filling his shoes <laughs> like has to understand that the, the their check that they get from working for capcom is going to have to come last their community and fans that are behind their games are going to have to come first because his checks will drop if those games start flopping. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, I wish him the best of luck. Whatever community he's going into next, I hope it's a fighting game. And I hope I hope he's just as dedicated as he was with Capcom with it, whatever company he's heading to. Because um, the fighting community, the Cap Capcom's fighting communi community was nothing without him. There was only two names that I, I knew when Street Fighter came out, like community-wise. And it was Seth Killian and Chris... Svensson. And other than that, I, I knew no other Capcom Unity, like, personnel people besides everybody on, like, SRK and um, Frame Advantage, like Seb, because I, I met him and talked to him. That was it. Other than that, I don't know anybody else that, that works that hard for their community. That's what, do you think this, like, opens up the way for, like, a new fighting game IP altogether? Yep. Instead of, like, here's this fighting game 10. No. Yep. I'm going to say no. I don't think Capcom's going to risk. Oh, no, no, for Capcom, no. No, no, not no. Capcom, but oh, I mean, he's like going for yeah, another for another for, game to come out for, yes. If, if whoever picks him up, they can they can yes, he can back up a new IP. He's a person that can start you from ground zero and prick you back up. If Capcom if 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 uh Chris were to go to where Seth went uh to to place to, 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 place to Sony and then they like revitalize Whatever game, whatever. Let's say PlayStation All Stars, because that shit needs help. Okay. That it, it, you know, he can he can put a whole new twist on to that game. You know, that's he's a person who, if it wasn't yep. for him, 
if it wasn't for him, the, the, a game can look completely different than what it was supposed to look like. Yeah, I would see. I can say that he would be a, uh, an able body to uh, make that kind of style game better than what it is currently. Yes, he has that kind of power to work to work with the community and to figure out. I mean, you have to realize he still has connections with every player, with every tester, with, with everybody that that came in uh, three months prior to to every Capcom game that was released to work on that game. He has still has those connections. So, I mean, for whoever picks him up, they have to realize that he, him, he himself can network better. And at the same time, at the end of the article, it also said that he's also looking. He's he was spreading out his connection to uh, to find better places for everybody else who got laid off. So, I can only imagine the team behind him that he created can only create better things. So it's it's it should be it should be a good. Um, it, there we might have some more refreshing air in the fighting game community, even though that I see it. A Kickstarter starting. Yeah, I can definitely see something like that. <laughs> one, one already started that makes stupid money, which is uh, Skullgirls, who ever made that. Yeah, Skullgirls yeah, yeah. Skull took off really well. That was that was a very good one. But, um, yeah. That's crazy. But, yeah, so, um, well, Capcom, I don't know what you guys are doing, what what's planned in the future. But um, as I mentioned earlier, there were, there were m- business things that happened that he wasn't happy about that I mean that he didn't wasn't happy about but he took part of and um and there was a lot of things that worked and didn't work and I was explaining this to uh Solo Bear earlier that there was a, a part in time when uh Street Fighter X Tekken came out and the video intro for Street Fighter X Tekken was it had Cody and Guy in it and when you get the game of Street Fighter X Tekken you don't see Cody uh you don't see, you didn't see Cody nor Guy you had to wait um 3 months after release for the PlayStation Vita to come out and get their copy and then you were able to unlock Col- uh, Cody and Guy, but you had to pay for that unlock, which was horrible because yeah, it, it was included in the Vita version, but you had to pay for it yeah, in the PlayStation version, PlayStation Xbox version, and that was a huge gripe because the the people were already in the game weeks. I mean, like th- two two or three weeks prior to the Vita release, um, people were unlocking the game and getting banned for it, but at the same time, the characters were already included in the game. And Capcom was testing out that new uh, business strategy to create games with partials, um, with partial creations and locking characters in it. And then you pay a fee and unlock the characters that are already on the disc. They are already present on the disc. They just are locked by a money value that you have to pay. But you've already paid for the disc, but you have to pay a little bit extra to unlock the rest of your disc. And that bombed so bad for them um, that uh, there was a huge sell that they put on for X Tekken where everything became really cheap. And there's been some more small small projects that he, they've diddle daddled with. Um like I said, bringing the the Street Fighter uh Third Strike back, the HD version of that. That was um that was their working getting the new lobby system for that, the the replay system for that because the community all the community members wanted that and he listened and was able to um work that in there. So they, he, he had some good ideas, and he also had some bad ideas, but he had more good than bad, so it, it, it should be. We'll see what happens in the future. We'll definitely see. I'm excited for the new fighting games coming out. <laughs> um, Kev? I have nothing to say about Capcom because I know absolutely nothing about them. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> um, Demi, any last words on the topic? No, that pretty much got it out. Sure. Yeah. Because I would just ramble about it. <laughs> sure oh, okay. you can. So, yeah. Um, Solace pretty much uh, went away with that topic and nailed, nailed everything that needed to be said uh, of of um, Chris leaving. Hopefully, by next week or co- next how many weeks, we find out where he's going and what's going on with that and what to expect. And that could be another topic. I was hand. about to ask you that. But if, uh, they, if they said if he announced where no. he uh, ended up, no, there. he put he put out his uh, information. I guess he's putting out his resume to go to go search for another place. But because Don Matrix, when he left me, uh, Microsoft, he already had yeah, he uh, Zenga lined up already. Yeah, that position was already available for him. Damn. So he jumped he jumped out of one spot into another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> well, next topic. <laughs> uh, 
Let's see here. You might as well just segue into the Don Matrix stuff because yeah. it's yeah, the we same were talking concept. about yeah, yeah, we were talking about Don Matrix. So something that Ke- Kev, since you haven't, you didn't say anything about Capcom, you do know who you know know about Don Matrix and um, his inf- the information or the news about him moving over to from Microsoft to Zynga. What are your thoughts on that topic? Um, I mean, he had a reason. Uh, granted, it's not something that's public, but everyone has their reasons to move on. Maybe he didn't, you know, feel welcome, or he didn't see Microsoft for what it was, or what it used to be anymore. And he sees something in Zanga that he wants to, I don't know, that he could probably run with. Uh, that's my reasoning. I, I don't see someone in his position why he would leave. Unless he didn't like it anymore, he didn't like his job, he didn't feel welcome to that nature, you know what I mean? Because someone with his power, you know what I mean, could just hop anywhere and go anywhere. How do you, I mean, uh, that, that, that's interesting. How would you guys feel if you were at a, in a position where you could just jump from one job to the next? Because you had that much experience credibility and then I wouldn't pick something so like this feels like such a greedy move like I don't know well like, you also gotta remember like I said he probably did it for the reasons cause he was in Microsoft for how many years and then he just it's like oh I'm just gonna go to you know Zanga com- versus Microsoft Microsoft's huge versus Zanga granted Zanga's not that huge but it's getting there you know what I mean it's, it's yeah but I think Zanga had it's like time that it like blew up and now it's like kind of Losing value, I guess, so I guess that's why like it's beneficial for them. Like they're bringing somebody new, but what's he have? Like I guess he wants to, I don't know. He wants to bring a new light to, or bring it back to. Maybe he sees potential. You know what I mean? We won't this, really know until later on down the road, later in the year, or maybe not even this year. Maybe a couple years down the road. Did this where, trigger? Did this trigger because of the fact that they lifted the DRM policy? I thought it did, but I mean, I don't know the. Behind, I wish I knew the behind the scenes with that situation. Because we just talked about the behind the scenes of Christian Svetson, uh, so I would, I would, I was just wondering if uh, anybody knew, like. Yeah, but see, they about. don't know if that's a hundred percent accurate, though. They think it's PlayStation trolls. What's PlayStation trolls? That to he the left res- because of the DRM. The flip yeah, the to the to restore the DRM. To try to make it a Steam console, or something like Steam. It's a lot of uh, unknown stuff about it, but which uh, the, that was the biggest thing. If it was a fan petition, right? Why would fans get so heated about the DRM, then want to make a petition to get it back? They made this, a petition of trying to get it back. Well, that's what I just linked in the chat. I yeah. didn't know if you guys wanted to talk about this, but there's now they got twelve thousand. Uh, signatures for this petition to bring back the old, old Xbox One policies. So you got to think that's twelve thousand people out of how many in the world? You yeah, know? I feel like that's that. Doesn't and I feel like those. I anymore. feel like those are PlayStation people just because they want to fuck Xbox harder. <laughs> Granted, <laughs> I could be completely wrong, and there might be people that are completely fine with the the DRM stuff. You know what I mean? There there are some pluses to it, I guess. Like, you can't really steal a game or a console and shit like that, or you'd have to pay a fee, you know what I mean? So you're really not stealing the game, you're just, you're basically paying for it to play it, regardless, if you, even if you steal it. So, I mean, the, a lot of turn he- uh, heads happened when they took away the DRM, I don't know, I don't see why they would want it back, unless they really try to push for it, because they want to make this next generation of consoles happen, uh, but it won't as console gamers they're they're not ready for like a steam based console yep. so wait the, who's not ready for a steam based console con- just uh, just con- just console, console gamers console in general console gaming. yeah the the consumers i don't think are ready for that kind of uh cuz just games. think no uh, drm goes into effect that affects gamestop heavily because then the only thing they could really do return games on are Wii U and PlayStation, PlayStation 4. The thing I think I feel as though the reason why Steam is so great on PC is because it turns your PC into a gaming console. But a gaming console is already a gaming no, console. No, Steam turns your, your PC into a gaming library. Well okay, a gaming it turns your PC into a gaming library that if, if your PC now plays games that that people people weren't probably thinking about 
playing their games through this program, you know, that has achievements and what have what have you. Yeah, it just you gives you like a nice like dashboard for all of the games that you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I, the console already has that set up for you when you purchase it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it is it basically turns a machine into something that it wasn't meant for before, and you're and in a console, a gaming console is already. This is what it is, you know. So there's no there's no special reason to make it like Steam or Steam equivalent, like except for I guess sales, which is what it was, which is what PlayStation Plus does, which is like similar not not like Steam but very similar to where you know thing you you get bargain prices stuff the that's really Steam sales, the summer so, sales. Oh my god. So um that's why it probably it, in my opinion it wouldn't work as for a gaming console as well as it would for PC. Alright, well, all right, I, I want to get back on topic. I want to know, like, just like we're talking about the DRM thing, would doing that 180 with the DRM be a make or break for somebody's career also? That's true, especially if he was the one that pitched the idea. Yeah, Yeah, I feel like he looks really bad right now. So I, I want to know, and this is just going with all the articles, because they didn't have him put the information out. Was he, like, his contract was already on the line prior to this? DRM thing or did he just leave because the DRM thing like I, I want to know what the DRM has affected with um, with Matrix about this situation because it doesn't all the pieces aren't matching up for me personally and going deeper into it it just seems like since that didn't work he already had something already planned with Zynga or was he already trying to was it like a, a covert coup D- was he trying to destroy Microsoft from inside alright now now now, that's <laughs> now we're getting into conspiracy things <laughs> was it yeah no but you, you see what I'm saying the metal, he, the metal gear saw, uh, <laughs> it was perfect timing of, he already oh, yeah. had he, he already had connections with Zynga games he already knew that position was going to be open and he already knew that his time at Microsoft was leaving <laughs> I, I'm sorry I, I can't I'm just. I can't get that out here. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I, I want I want to know all the pieces of this puzzle to understand this more clearly because all options have to be all options have to be covered for this. <laughs> oh my God. I, yeah. I, that was really unprofessional. I Man, should have my phone on. <laughs> all all options I I feel need to be covered. Did the DRM thing make or break his contract? Was he already in conspiracy with Zynga Games and already had this move already in progress? If so, well, it did say that he kind of was planning this for exactly a while. a while. He said, "My friends that know me like knew that my time here at Microsoft was coming to an end." So, oh. but I don't think he's trying to sabotage. What does he gain sabotaging something besides him now looking bad? Like now he just looks bad. I but, don't think it was. I don't think it was sabotage. But I, I did feel as though this 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 DRM thing was like the final thing to push it over the edge like okay like if this goes south if this last idea goes south then i'm gonna make the decision to go ahead and move you know to another another company so i feel as though that if the drm policy stayed in effect he'd probably still be there mm. all right in Possibly. my opinion Hopefully. i feel like he had a big he had a big role in that in that decision hi ygt yeah so YGT. and i mean Looking back at back, wow, looking back at his his uh, tenure with Microsoft and Xbox, he's had a clean slate of quality like all throughout, all throughout. He had the, Microsoft has not had serious flops where you've seen Don uh, Matrick come out and say, "Yeah, guys, sorry, this, this, and this." Like, no, he's it's been pretty smooth sailing for that that old man. Pretty smooth sailing, but um. I want to I want to understand why a lot of these fucking corporations and uh, business companies, um, business models are getting reorganized. Like, why is this happening? Is it really like the younger I, younger heads are coming in, or are more older people like taking over again? Well, for the gaming industry, yeah, because I think it's just the consumers are going in a different direction. I feel like the consumers. I feel like they wanted to, they, weren't. they wanted to test something out that they wanted to see if it would work if people would accept it because if you do remember PS4 was kind of going to be doing the same thing with the DRM um, like the same policies at the time you know what I mean it wasn't like oh it's up to the developer no it was to the point where all games were DRM it didn't matter about the developer it was just set in stone it was there but then they drew back on their statement 
and then they made a fool out of Microsoft. And then whoever pitched the DRM idea for Microsoft was like, well, they just made us look like assholes. Yeah. So then they probably, you know what I mean? They weren't ready for it. They fell back on it. Then they had to change their uh, their policies to get their customers because they saw a huge decline. No one wanted an Xbox One. Everyone wanted a PS4 due to price and DRM. So they were like, well, we probably won't cha- drop the price because we're going to do like crazy ridiculous bundles, but we'll take away the DRM. We'll basically make it a 360 so you don't have to be online, but you will have to have it connect, and it will have to be plugged in at all times, but it won't have to be powered. Which, that doesn't bother me at all, to be honest. But that's personally what I think. Um, we only really, like I said, know later on on uh, what happened. But these are all just hypotheticals. That's well, it. I feel once he leaves, he needs to write a postmortem. <laughs> he needs to write a postmortem. I hope he writes a postmortem. Yeah, but everyone in Microsoft is too big-headed to have a postmortem. <laughs> You should be like, yeah, I'm a boss, peace. Yeah. I'd be happy with that. I would definitely be happy with a postmortem of a, like, a VP leaving one company going to the next. And then that's I still... see good riddance. Yep. I mean, that still opens the, the uh, other flood doors. Let's look at the other side. Why Zynga Games? They, that they, paycheck. They're, th- that's a teetering company also now. They're, see, man. Their development is like... They're, they're going... They're they're throwing fucking rocks into the fog, hoping, hoping to uh, land. It's really I, yeah, I, but I feel like they probably have like a bigger like general audience because they're doing casual, like social games yeah, and stuff. Social and so like we we would look at this and be like, ew, Zynga. But like, my mom and grandma hit that stuff up every day. <laughs> <laughs> Go so, hard in the ville. Yeah, you don't even know. <laughs> Maybe mobile games or mobile. It's mobile games, right? Mobile that they, well, they, they do, do they Facebook do, games. Yeah. They do mobile games. Yeah, which everything. will probably go to mobile games. Like Facebook games can go to mobile games. Like, and they have. Uh, that's probably the direction that he thinks that the, the industry is going, or that's going to be well, a big thing in the future. The, I mean, that is the way the industry is technically going. You can, you can make more money creating smaller, uh, social games than you can for AAA titles. And like those small yep. games will blow up. Like, look at Candy and you, Crush and, now, and how much money they're making. Yeah, and then like these things are only made by a handful of people, so all that money is going to whoever they, wh- whatever they, whoever they had to talk to to get their stuff out there, and then the rest is just, is theirs. It's pocketed. Yep. So like this, like Super Meat Boy team, two fucking people. They bought a house. They bought a house because of Meat Boy. Not even we didn't even talk about what's that other game that they that was that's big. Kev, help me out. What's that other game that they made that was big? Um, something Isaac. Binding of Isaac, right? Oh, yeah, the Binding yeah. of Isaac. That, oh, Binding yeah. of Isaac. All right, so Meat Boy came out before Binding of Isaac, then Binding of Isaac, Binding of Isaac, and now something else that they're making, I think. I don't know. But, like, if you can continue to make great games as a small a small group of people, like um, Super Giant Games, how they're making their second game and it's looking great, you're, you should be fine. I mean, there's going to be the stress, the fucking stress of having a deadline and, and pushing that stuff out but if it works out you know you can win big and you can be just as big as anybody in the industry I honestly think it's less stressful to be in a smaller group than in a, in a bigger company I don't know what does, what does anybody else feel how does anybody else feel I don't know I was never in that situation <laughs> oh, <laughs> but okay. I could only I could only imagine relying on another person to release a game that has the going to have the hype of Binding of Isaac and of Meat Boy because those are very, very, very popular games. You see the top streamers play them and they pull thousands of thousands of views like Lethal Frag, Man vs. Game, um, uh, Look at My Chicken and stuff like that, etc. Crumbs, they all play it, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. And they all pull thousands of views playing Binding of Isaac and stuff like that. Even though they've beaten the game so many times, they're just people enjoy watching it it's a stream friendly game so they have that burden like all right fuck we have we're gonna have to release another huge title that's gonna have to be on par or better than those two games so you i think could, so 
Do you think, I mean, like, when it comes to passion, then yes, that would cross your mind. Like, oh, damn, we got to make our next project bigger than this. But, like, I know it's all about the money and everything, but, like, do you, don't you think there's people out there who just made one game and was like, you know what, I just want to make this one game. And then it, when it blows up, um, I mean, of course you can get more money if you made a second game, but, like, is it really something, don't, do you, don't you think there's people out there who's just like, you know what, I just wanted to make that one game. Well, yeah, there's always going to be that, that person to be like, yeah, I made the game just to make it. You know one I mean? and but, done. Yeah, one but and done. These guys aren't like that, though, because when Binding of Isaac came out, there wasn't really much to the game because I have it. And then they made updates, they made patches, they fixed, they tweaked, they added to the story, uh, added more items, added new characters, uh, DLC, etc., etc. They et nurtured go, the shit out of that. Yeah, they babied their game. They listened to their community. They understood what was wrong. They understood what they needed to fix. They tweaked, made it better, improvised. So it's not like they were just like, yeah, fuck it, we made the game, we made the game. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh, I got the- all the money, but... They, they they put their time and effort into the game and I feel like their next game that they make, they're going to put their heart and soul in it and I could understand where the stress is going to be from that. So they're probably very stressful working with just two people. Yep. Oh, I know they are. I watched the movie. Yep, so. um, there, there's an indie game movie out there, guys. You guys should go watch it if you haven't. It's really... Uh, no, they sound like pretentious assholes in that movie. Not the people that did Super Meat Boy, but the guy that did uh, Fez. Well, he yeah. annoyed the shit out of me. That's his life. That's what he does. Actually, that was one of my. That was one of the most interesting ones because he was like almost by himself in that. Where um. And... Yeah, but he was just like I'm the greatest, and the, and then he was like, shitting on other games as if like he's like mine is the greatest game, and I don't I don't make shit games, and re- like referring to Halo. He's like no, I. No, that was I'd... that was the programmer from from Meet Super Meat Boy. Oh uh, the... oh yeah that's, yeah that is, fuck that guy the, too yeah. Um, what's his name? Fish, I think is his name. Something fish from that made Fez. That was a really interesting. Um, that was a really interesting. Uh, game and his experience and and documentary for for in his point of view. Um, Edmund, who is the Flash designer, for for Super Meat Boy, the main you know the one that made everything. Mm-hmm. The chubby uh, one was, was cool. The other one. Yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's Edmund, the one the one that you said that was cool. Right. Um, Edmund is the one that <laughs> he showed some of his new ground flash games. Oh man. And he, he, he said he lo- he used to love to this is getting off topic right now, but he loved to um push the boundaries, see how far he can go before before the the, the parental the parental hmm. fucking knots come to him and be like, Yo, listen, you can't <laughs> we can't broadcast <laughs> this on we can't put this game on our website. He just wanted to push the push the limits and then hey, they ended up doing a super meat boy thing which it was just the two of them, so they were working on it all the fucking time. But, I mean, it paid off. They got a goddamn house for Super Meat Boy. Just Super Meat Boy, a house. So, Yeah, but anyways. also, them being just them, too, there's also a flip side to being with a team, too, because then you have to rely on everyone reading, uh, meeting, like, time quotas yep. with music, game, uh, yep. illustration. Alex did this already. Yep. So, I mean, I never experienced it, but I could only imagine that being another stress will be like, fuck, is that guy going to be able to do what he has to do on time? Or what if I'm going to be able to do what, what I have to do on time? And you got to remember, there's also like huge games, because I saw the documentary for Halo when they made that. Mm-hmm. Um how they went to everyone and it was like super stressful and they would always be at work like all the time while people leave they're just sitting in office trying to just you know catch up and reach reach deadlines and I could see where that being a problem and you also got to remember who's going to be the person to take a initiative in your I guess your group like let's say you're doing um, fuck, I don't know the map guardian and you have and it's just you and your team Who's gonna be the one to do this, this, and that? You know what I mean. So I could, I, I feel like there's more stress in that than with another person, because then you could just be like, look, yo, you're, you're, you're fucking up, dude. Like you could talk to one person, you could see how he's working and how fast he's doing and how fast he's putting it out, versus something like Halo, which it was a triple A title, where if that game didn't reach its deadline, they were fucked. Mm-hmm. Like they had, they couldn't, they couldn't not be late. You know what I mean? They had to be on time with their product versus something from an indie title. They could kind of, I mean, they have more leeway with it, mm-hmm. but it's not as much as you think, I would assume. 
but they definitely want to pump out their game because then if they're just like, yeah, we're going to come out with this, uh, yeah, we're pushing it back three months, we're pushing it back another three months, that'll just make them look sloppy and bad. But they were pretty, they were pretty uh, timely with their game release, so I was very, yeah. very surprised. I feel like this is a whole this uh, renting gamers can be all about that one, <laughs> the one topic of indie and stress versus an actual. Um, I mean, two of us, two out of company. Most, well, a lot of us actually have experienced that in the PB recreation and and um, pick me a winner uh, team. They've yeah, uh, everybody there has uh, experienced it. Experienced it, yeah, experienced it. I think, and I feel like it's on a minuscule level. Like at uh, there's a lot more leeway because it all depends on how you're graded. Yeah, and and, uh, and in school. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, you are an individual, but you work within a team, so your grade definitely yeah. depends on what you can produce. And yeah, I definitely can agree to that. I can attest to that. Um, and I you also got to remember, also for a competitive game, like you gotta have testers for that game, and you're gonna only get the people at the highest level to do that. You know what I mean? You're not gonna get some just scrub off the street. Yeah, test my game, dude. You want people to exploit the shit out of your game? No, you want you want the bullshit. To see people. if you can. F- no, you want a mixed crowd. It's just like a science project. You want the bullshit nasty control group and then you want that actual really really strict control group um to test that shit like especially if it's competitive because then that also appeases to your casual how can you present this to your casual true didn't really think about it like that mm-hmm. i i honestly like as lazy and and as much as i procrastinate there's still something i, I still want to make a game. I feel like there's this one idea that I have, and I, and I haven't seen it done. I wanna I wanna see that that done. So I'm gonna um see if I can make plans for that. I know it sounded as hypocritical as it sounds, but um moving on to the next topic because we're like we really really we really wasted time on that one. Not wasted, but talked about that <laughs> a lot. What was it? What was the next uh next topic here? We talked we about have, the news. We have our PS4 topic, uh, sold out at GameStops, and we have our Grand Theft Autos, which I feel is going right. to take forever. Alright, so... <laughs> so, uh, well, we didn't... Did we, did we not broadcast? We didn't do this last week, right? It was, no, did we, we, did we, we, no. we, we did not. We, we didn't, alright, so we couldn't make this longer. I, I, I don't think that's a big deal. So, um, I'm going to go into, since we were on the topic of indie, and PS4 supports indie, and all this stuff is going apparently good for PS4. There's a... There's a there was a, an announcement that like GameStop, as disgusting as they are with pushing forward, getting people to spend a hundred dollars to put down the money on PlayStation Four and Xbox One, the PS Four they actually halted pre-orders because they have so many pre-orders on the PS Four that I guess they don't have enough um, product behind it. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you... they're only allotted like a certain amount. Wow. Like, yeah. Each vendor, so mm-hmm. GameStop probably just sold out of their yeah. their their quantity. They already reached yeah. their limit, so they're they're halting pre-orders. I don't think this is permanent until the thing releases the the system releases because it's July. You still have these other months before the system comes out. They didn't even have a release date on that system yet, and it's already one one company already hit their limit. Like, if if you know this is a business, Sony's gonna definitely lift that uh that limitation so what do you guys think about that there's really nothing to talk about this uh it's i guess it was a very high dense area uh very populated like when i used to live out in florida there was one game stop that i lived near that was closer to me that was convenient but it was really populated like there was the lines were fucking crazy long for like pre-orders et cetera, et cetera. So I could understand that being a problem, but then if I drew, uh, drove the extra, I don't know, thirty minutes, I would be in this GameStop in the middle of nowhere, like no one goes to this one. Um, so it, it depends on where it was, but definitely they're not going to just be like, yeah, well, that's the limit. You can't get in your area. You have to go somewhere else. Um, they're definitely going to have to extend it, especially since they didn't really confirm a date, but they said sometime in December. Um, so they kind of gave like a broad horizon of when the game's going to be released. That's it. Demi? Well, I think like, because it's only GameStop that sold out of their pre-orders. And I think they want to create like a supply, like supply and demand type thing. So... It it would make sense not to a lot more, or at least have like a different version or something. 
Um, Because then that's going to bring all the people out. They're going to be like, man, I need to go to the midnight. I need to find it at this Best Buy or this GameStop or anything like that. So I think that's this is going to start the hype on it. I mean, Mm -hmm. there were lines friggin' like down streets when the PS3 came out. They want to do the same thing. Well, yeah, any any real console. Mm -hmm. Um, But Uh, I think that's what they're trying to create. Because if if you're like, oh, I can pick up my PS4 the day after it comes out at any store, no, then you're not going to be hype about it. You want to be like, I need to pick this up at midnight. I need a pre-order. I need to pay for it now. So... Uh, what is that you said before, uh, Solidus? You like you know what this means, right? And I said, and I, and I said, what does this mean? Do you remember? You remember that conversation? Hell no! You know I got bad short term memory. You were like, you're like that means people are gonna die. This this coming. Oh holiday. yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> okay. Oh, going off of that one. Okay. That so, being said, and <laughs> and the demand. This is so real. The, what we're about to say is so real. I, so I, I want you. I want you all to take heed in what I say. <laughs> I'm a consumer. I used to I used to work retail, and I live around some real niggas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> some uh, real ninjas. No, that so, no. I'm I'm putting this out there. If the supply right now is less than the demand for this PlayStation Four, I'm calling at least ten deaths from this console. <laughs> what? Th- this being said, this okay. This being said. I'm going to go down my list. We all know when the demand is greater than the supply, people people, people get crazy. This happens yes. with food. This happens with electricity. This happens Black with... Black Friday. This happens with um, money. It just it, it, that's, that's one fact, right? That's checked. <laughs> that's a shame. People, more people know right now, the less informed consumers know that PlayStation 4 won E3. So mm-hmm. their first buy is going to probably be most likely a PlayStation 4. That's I'm calling that as a fact because I've asked a lot of people and they said PlayStation 4 and they had no reason why they wanted the PlayStation 4. They just know that they don't want that BS that Microsoft had. That's what that's their response and I didn't chase them down for this one. All right? That's two. Three. It's the newest console coming out. It's a new console. When have somebody when has a person not been injured? On a new console, Super Nintendo, remember. the Wii. Nope, I think somebody got uh, uh, put down in a coma for a Wii. What? That's crazy. They didn't hear that. Um, I think some. I did hear about somebody getting hurt or killed from a truck from uh the PS3. All right. I so, think I did hear that. So those are my top three. I'm treating the PlayStation Four like like the Jordans, like <laughs> like last. <laughs> what is it? Which ones came out in uh, last year, August? No, the phone posits. I'm treating them like the <laughs> penny phone I, posits that yeah, came man, I out. Wanna I just want to let you know I fucking hate phone posits. When I'm gonna, people I'm gonna let you know. went crazy for the phone posits and when the camels came out, everybody went insane and tried to kill each other. I'm so calling gross. this. I'm calling this to happen. I, I don't. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope that you know times times will tell me wrong, but history will repeat itself. Ninjas will be ninjas, and the supply does not meet the demand. So be careful. I do agree with Kevin. Your area is pro- your area's quota for this console is probably cut. Maybe that's why you're sold out. Um. Well, when I even pre-ordered mine, to, uh, they even said they were like, "We have 20 pre-orders of this one. Well, like more like 50 pre-orders mm-hmm. of this one, and we have 60 pre-orders of that one." And that's why I was like, I need to pre-order mine right away. Yeah, so whatever whatever happens, I just want you guys to know on release day, I love you all, but be <laughs> safe. Because if you out there flaunting when you come out of that store with the PlayStation, when you come out of the store with the PlayStation 4, I hope, I hope you're wearing some kind of body armor. <laughs> because haters will hate. I'm picking up both of mine in the gallery of Philadelphia. If I make it out alive, it's going to be a miracle. And you're taking the train. You better ask for a ride. Uh -uh, No, you can't can't take public transportation after buying a a a gaming console. That's that's. I saw a lady. I'm gonna have an Xbox One and a PS4 under my arm. I saw a lady. I saw a lady leaving Soho with a um a full iMac um like you know that all-in-one joint that the the all-in-one box. I'm like, lady, you're lucky. I'm not a Mac user. Because that is dangerous. Even if there's not a Mac in there, 
putting that kind of uh you just told him that you just told everybody that you would rob that woman no i <laughs> this this is all for show this <laughs> that's is all, fucked up you can that's check you can, this, is all this is all for show i'm just saying it just to be saying it but i do feel that if you present yourself as prey you will get preyed on so please be careful um when these consoles come out playstation 4 xbox uh one it's i think it's going to be a really bad season for uh, consumers um for uh, that 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 starting day i, I don't i don't want to see the news of that day for that fact because this is a new console we haven't seen a new console in seven years um wii u i i understand i'm, I'm petting my wii u as i say this i understand that you are a next gen console but you're not a next gen console <laughs> exposed <laughs> but um, sorry not sorry yeah sorry not sorry peace 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 not really giving a fuck because I don't have one. So um, I do, I do want to say everybody, please be careful on release day. Um, PlayStation Four and Xbox One will be crazy. Tiso says, "You know where I'll be on release day? My house, because Amazon delivers same day. If yes. you got no games, you exposed." Okay, now Amazon will deliver same day, but if they still have that same issue that they had with um, what, what, what? What did Amazon say sorry for? And they started giving everybody a lot of stuff. It was some games. You better hope Amazon is on point. Because if they fail, they will fail hard as shit. So, um, we'll see. That's what, imagine all of the fucking, like, mail trucks delivering how many PS4s oh, so and stuff. They're going to get dropped Fast and the Furious. Yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, true that. Fuck furious. that. I do not trust that in some truck. That's true. Oh, <gasps> that's right. I'll be able to work on that shit. UPS swag. What's good? <laughs> Stealing everybody's shit. What? All right, you're going to jail. <laughs> peace. Peace, 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 nah, peace, peace. Nah, nah, fall back, fall back. I'm too good. <laughs> he said, I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god, Tiso said that would happen to him because he's like Optimus Prime on that side. <laughs> oh my Too god, good. he's Too he's good. always watching. <laughs> <laughs> Mother gonna transform. Tiso, I bring you the all spark. Ah, psych, it's a oh PlayStation 4. I don't know. I don't know how Tiso feels now with the. If, apparently, he's like back to Microsoft. He's very wishy washy, and I don't believe oh, him yeah. on anything in the next gen generation that's, that's anyway. Fine. That's what I told him. I was like, Tiso, I liked you better when you were a Nintendo fanboy. It's, you it's hear fine. that, Tiso? It's fine. It's like, I, don't, I don't think you should be a fanboy. I think you should be a, a conscious gamer. Do I mean, you think I'm a conscious gamer? Hell no. Xbox One swag. <laughs> Kevin, hell no. Kev, Kev, Kevin, not. hell no. I, I'm a conscious gamer. Kevin has Microsoft tatted on his butt. He be twerking. <laughs> See, I don't even have... He any, be twerking. I don't even have... You know what's fucked up? I, I have a PS3 too. Fall back. I don't have... I don't have Sony tatted. I actually... I was... There was a one... Is that the equivalent of saying, oh, it's okay, I can say that because I have a black friend? What? Oh, it's okay. Yes, I yes, can, that is like, definitely. I that's definitely. I have a PS3. Oh, okay, though. okay, okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, but yeah. see, Demi, that's where you're wrong. I have more African American friends than white friends. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> so, Kev, Kev said. No. Kev said he likes his Xbox is white and his PlayStation Four is black. All right, that's what he said. My, my, I mean, my Xbox PlayStation Three is black. black. False. My Xbox right. is black. False. That wasn't. That's what you like. All right. You like. You like your Xbox is white and. It's funny. I like. I like every, all my systems need to be black. Not need to be black. Well, you're like, a racist. We all knew that. Prefer, <laughs> we always knew that from the day we met you. That's racist. I, I prefer. I prefer that they're they're black. Like I don't know. Over white. White just gets dirty too easily. It's so noticeable. So you see more. Du all right. I'm not even. Gonna Take care of that. your shit. You do. You do. But like I don't know. It just seems like. But but you said you like that white girl at the trailer park though, so exposed, <laughs> random, but random, but uh, <laughs> not true by the way, not true. Oh, false. Oh, what's so, wrong with white girls at, in the trailer parks? <laughs> in the trailer right, park. We're going way off topic for no <laughs> right, like, chill, chill. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. Take all this aggression out on league. Just okay. focus. All right, all right. I'm sorry, but all yes, right. I do. I, I'm going to go back to the topic. Um, Speaking of ignorant shit, no, no. Wait, all right, all right, right, go no, ahead. No, 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 you, you take no, no. it. You take it. I was gonna move. I was run it. Run with it, brother. Run with it. I was gonna move to the next topic. No, what did you? you Who's saying bolt it? Who's saying? You're about to say bolt it. You were about to say final thoughts. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say my final thoughts was um, uh, I don't think that, I think that the supply will catch up to the demand. Um, 
there's no way that they're going to leave consumers out. If they want it, they're going to try to get it as best as possible out mm-hmm. there. Sony, I mean by they, they're going to get it out as best as possible to um, I hope that's the day to run out because I didn't, I didn't even, as much as I talk about PlayStation and how much I like PlayStation, I didn't pre-order my PS4 yet because <laughs> oh. I, I, I never had any plans of buying it day one because yeah. even if I bought it day one, honestly, with all the all, with all the stuff that I already have, I can be push. I can still push content out on stuff that I already have, onto onto this channel. So Halo Five, what? I don't. I feel as though it's not. Um, it's not really that. I mean, it's important, but there's there's still so much to cover. Titanfall in this. Yep. Titanfall. If Titanfall, there was also this is rumor. Rumor has it that Titanfall is a, is a is a time exclusive. Time exclusive. Yes, and I and I hope that's correct because that'll be awesome. If it's well, I'll still be playing it before you guys, so... Mm-hmm. If it, uh... That's okay. My content gonna look better that's, than that's... yours. <laughs> 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 that's okay. It doesn't matter who plays first, as long as we got the content. Them views, content. though, mm-hmm. on Twitch, that, that, that I'm that... streaming right from my Xbox One. <laughs> yeah, go, 240p is gonna look mean as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Like going back to like Titan Twelve possibly being on both systems, that would be great for me personally because I, I didn't plan on getting an Xbox One. This is this is Solar Bear speaking, by the way. I didn't plan on getting an Xbox One, and I I did think that Titan Twelve was very interesting, and it would it would help us. Uh, I mean, uh, even more, I'll be able to help uh, Solidus even more with his content pushing moving forward because I would have some experience with the game as well. So on on PlayStation Four, it gives you a, another point of view. Uh, on the game, so basically, what I'm saying is, we'll get full coverage, and that's that's always a good thing. Yeah. And if you going with the same uh, aspect or thought process that was given when we found out that Kingdom Hearts three and Final Fantasy fifteen coming to Xbox One as well as PS four, same thing with Titans Fall. It'll be better because more people will be able to play it, more money for respawn. Yep. So, moving to the next topic, uh, we were getting really ignorant. <laughs> in that last topic when it came to ninjas and PS4 <laughs> and how the roll the uh trucks fast and furious style GTA 5 gameplay uh was just released um a couple of days ago and they showed a lot of different things they showed um gun gunplay they showed I don't think they showed fisticuffs hand to hand combat no, they, didn't show us, you know. they showed a little bit of driving how moving from one main character to another main character would work on the fly um uh, did, did all you guys see the gameplay? I know Kevin yes. did. And um, did Alex, you watched it, right? Of course. Demi, did you watch it? Of course. All right. So um, I didn't really watch it, guys. So I lied. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna jump into this first. Grand Theft Auto, in my opinion, I was sold to Grand Theft Auto as a series on Grand Theft Auto Three when I just started getting my PlayStation Two, and then I was blown away with Grand Theft Auto Three. Grand Theft Auto never really disappointed me. I'm not gonna say I was dis. I didn't like Vice City. I'm not gonna say I was disappointed in Vice City. What Vice City was the best one? Vice City. This is all, Vice, this is all, Vice, Vice City, dog. This is all opinionated. Um, Vice City to me, I I wasn't. I never was really into or interested into in the uh you know the drugs in Miami the star the Scarface type theme of any game. So like Vice City wasn't really something that was interesting to me. I didn't. I wasn't really interested in the story because I had watched Scarface. I've seen this happen before. I've seen how this gone. This went down. This storyline. So, um, but when it, when every time a Grand Theft Auto game comes out, it's always like it always it's it's a huge impact. It's 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 uh it's an amazing thing. Like I, I didn't think I wanted to know how they were gonna get any better than Grand Theft Auto Four gameplay wise, and Grand Theft Auto Five just the control. You can just it just seems like the controls and everything how everything is gonna play out is much much tighter. Like um. They 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 messed or messed with or they made uh, Rockstar made Max Payne three bef- right before Grand Theft Auto five so the gunplay should be just like GTA I mean I'm gonna say GTA just like Max Payne I'm pretty sure and all of you guys didn't play Max Payne um, and the driving is supposed to be more arcade style like I guess Need for Speed mm-hmm. or whatever arcade uh, game you guys play so. Was there anything in the old GTAs that you guys had problem with game mechanics wise that you hope to see and or hope to have fixed or have more a better time playing in GTA five than the old ones? The jump. The jumping w- bothered you? The jumping yes. yeah, I'm gonna have to agree. 
the Fuck. jump gone. the jumping mechanic in there. There was times where I, you know I can run to a wall, jump, and I'll climb it. And there's times I just face on the wall and just start rubbing on it. Um, <laughs> I, I felt I would I felt that the the jumping mechanic in that game was very buggy. Um, the game is well, <laughs> the game is really 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 well polished. The game I've always I've never had a problem with the controls. It's always been the jump. The jump is a slow motion jump. Um, and it's you very jump like an idiot. Yeah, it's very unreliable when you're when you're actually it's trying to play. List. Yeah, because you're jumping really slow and you're swinging your arm. He'll do about four arm swings with hit, with, with the jump. With like, how many arm swings do you do when you jump? Really? <laughs> you know what Rockstar's <laughs> probably thinking if they watch this? Like, with all the content we put in GTA, are you guys really talking about <laughs> how he looks when he jumps? Okay, when <laughs> you're okay, listen. When you're shooting people online and you're trying to run away and get in the cover. And you hit that wall, and instead of instead of uh, hurdling it, hurdling it, you face plant it and get shot in the back <laughs> and die. That's that. That's embarrassing. That like, hurts. I can, I can imagine Solid playing, playing, <laughs> get shot in the back under that same same situation. And he was like, "Come on, game. You know what I was trying to do. Why did you, <laughs> you know what I was trying to accomplish. Come on, man." <laughs> no, but that's what that's that's really. I mean, that's my only gripe. Other than that, I felt that every Grand Theft Auto I've ever played has been polished to my standards. Like that that game was made for me to try to abuse it, and never can until I use cheat codes. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, Demi, was there any any mechanic in the game or any? Oh, I know you don't really like. Said I don't know. If well, you... that's the one thing I fucking hate. Well, no, I didn't hate Grand Theft Auto. I've become jaded about Grand Theft Auto, especially working in the gallery and all of the fucking, like, 12-year-olds. No, even, like, 8-year-olds that would come in trying to buy this game. And, like, I don't know. I was kind of just over it. But that was, like, the shock factor back then, though. There wasn't a game that was like that. Now everything's, like, brash and in your face. So, I mean, I looking at the new gameplay, I'm actually kind of excited for it. It looks like it's still taking itself seriously. And I really like the game, like new mechanics that they're adding. I just fucking hated the driving, but I'm really bad at driving. They actually the Grand Theft Grand Theft Auto 4 driving is that what you're talking about? They, or just driving oh yeah, because that's they, what I would always whenever we had a test systems, I'd put in Grand Theft Auto, and it, you always start off in that parking lot, and every goddamn time I would drive into the pole. <laughs> <laughs> every time. Um, they're gonna they're 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 completely changing the way the the uh the mechanics of driving. Yeah, I think yeah, that's what made me happy. I was I, like, all right. I think they're really going to like their um they they brought their Midnight Club team along. I was just about to say that. I really I think, think I think the game's gonna be like Midnight Club. And if anybody, I don't really play racing games, but oh I'm gonna tell goodness. you, that's Midnight what I grew Club. up on. Midnight, Midnight Club, Club and Burnout. Midnight Club <sighs> and Burnout were the only two racing games I really cared about. That and then uh. My my real my real ignorant side is coming out. Need for Speed Underground too. No, if you if you like if you like if you like unrealistic racers, you could not <laughs> you could not go wrong. No, I'm just saying this as from my perspective because I play I play racing games. And I actually play them seriously. Yeah. If you play Blur, Midnight Club, Burnout, <laughs> and the Need for Speed Earlies, the the early um undergrounds, they were mm -hmm. the best unrealistic Mario Kart. They they were the best racing games known to man. Like those, Diddy Kong Racing, though. Like, you can get on those... No, Diddy Kong Racing was a little bit more complex. Oh, really? Okay, continue what you were saying. But uh, those racing games that I mentioned, or they were, to me, the best at what they were... Like, if you just want to get on the sticks and race your, you race your buddy and get that best score and beat him at that race, don't even worry about the time, because you're not racing for time. You're racing to beat and get that number one spot. You're like Ricky Bobby the whole time. <laughs> That's what I mean. I grew. That's what I grew up on. Like I grew up on those shitty racers. There, the, like the whole family would yep. just get together, get together, there. and just sit on it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and I do feel that if they incorporate the Midnight Club uh, team to this game, it it can only it can only go right. It can only go right. <laughs> it can all yeah. Midnight Club. It, it's just a it's a fun racer. Just in general, it's it's it was it. I don't know. Like, I don't have. I have no words for it. Like it was just. It was addictive, and it was. It was just a lot of fun. Now, when you put Max Payne, the 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 spirit of Max Payne, the spirit of of uh, Midnight Club into GTA, what are the games that they work on that they can they can put into this game? That was that's pretty much the main thing. Unless they worked on any fighting games, fist fighting games. I mean, you can already see that they're putting the Max Payne feel into it. But yeah, definitely. Um, I wonder if they're gonna put the same physics, the same physics engines in it, where you can like. Three six, you can like move your camera three sixty degrees, and your character has a run for every single 
you know way of you know running backwards or south south you know like any any of the eight directions uh and holding a gun like only being able to hold two guns now i know only being only being able to hold two guns is not in it i've in in the gameplay uh trailer they showed where there's a um a weapon wheel you guys are familiar with the weapon wheel right Mm -hmm. uh the weapon there's a weapon wheel where you just you can still pull out a gun out of your shirt or your pocket wherever he was holding an ak it just comes out of nowhere where uh in max Payne you can only have a two-handed weapon and then a one-handed weapon so basically a pistol or desert eagle which is still fake. You hold two anyway, um, <laughs> and a shotgun. So you and Max Payne, he actually holds with a gun that you're not using. He actually holds it in his other hand, realistically, and then he has a holster for his pistol. I thought they were gonna add that in there, um, and they they apparently they didn't. But going back, I hope the physics uh, engine for Max Payne is in the game because uh, I wanted to see some gameplay of that, but I didn't. But uh, do you guys think this is going to be game of the year? Yes. Yeah. It's coming out like right in yeah. that time where everybody's going to forget about everything else and just rant about that. It's going to be the new thing right at the end of the year. Um, I wouldn't say it's at the. It is kind of in the end of the year, but that's a look at up. everything that becomes like game of the year. It's always coming out in the fall because that's yeah, when people is, like right. remember. That's They're why like, Dead, oh man, that game was really good because they Dead played Space it like last it. This month. Yep. Dead yeah. Space Two never made game of the year because uh, what you call it came out the same year. Something crazy like uh, Dead Skyrim Space One was better than Dead Space Two. Sk- uh, uh, Skyrim came out like all the way. At the mm-hmm. end of the year, end at yeah. like the end of November, last thing you it came out in one. Like you uh-uh, it came out eleven eleven. Yep. Whatever. As you can see, it my came poster, out late. It says eleven eleven eleven, dog. Triple eleven. <laughs> yep. Yo, yeah, didn't didn't um going going to well the only real threat that they have that's that's keeping them in the way of uh, game of the year is Last of Us, and yeah. Uncharted. Two and three, I think, got game of the fucking year or something like. They have a game of the year edition. I know Uncharted Two won game of the year, mm-hmm. but uh, I think Nate Drake saw game of the year twice. Um, speaking of game of the year, do you guys know that they actually make skits for the characters who win game of the year? The yeah. games that win the game of the year. I didn't know that. I had no idea. You know, Joker, Skyrim didn't win game of the year. It was Portal Two. Wow. Because the video starts out as like a dragon in the air and then like a portal comes out of nowhere and the dragon goes through it and then they're like ha ha we won yeah. oh yeah that's awesome that's awesome that is awesome um but they actually make these little video shorts like the joker had like best uh, actor act a uh, character of the year or something like that and then like the joker actually it was claptrap that got best character of this year, <gasps> this year yeah so the, they'll have like a claptrap video of him having the ward in his hand talking about how he won drake won Drake was there was one where Drake was in the desert and he was he was trying to get to the VGAs and he was like lost in the desert and then uh he found a well and then he he was trying to get water and he pulled it up and the and the trophy was there and he was like oh holy shit I won and I'm not even there and like you know they just have these funny little skits so um I had no idea that they do stuff like that so um I think even if GTA wins game of the year the last of us might get an a, a reward like something of the year you know so i think both of those games might deserve to get it because it's always like oh you know grand theft auto doesn't grand theft auto won so many times it doesn't deserve to get game of the year and then they blow you away every single time like holy shit like how can they how can you not get game of the year yeah how do they but, keep doing it back to back? how do they do it over and over yeah rockstar really knows what they're doing they really do <clears throat> final thoughts um this is awesome uh day one buy for anybody yep Xbox One. Already. Dude, I'm buying like three games off fucking Xbox One. Do you think GTA Five is gonna have a next gen version? I don't think they talked about that. I think it will. You can't go wrong without. Uh, I think the Ultimate Edition or the Collector's Edition or the Game of the Year Edition is gonna be on the next gen system. But you know, like Assassin's Creed Four and the other games, Watch Dogs, they're gonna have a PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One version. You know, there, there's gonna be different versions. Rockstar didn't talk about that. So, and is Xbox One backwards compatible disc base? They didn't release no, that information no, yet. They didn't. Yeah, I was about to say. That hasn't so, been said. so when GTA Five comes out, and you get your new system, you're still gonna have to plug in your old system to play GTA Five. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know. That's something to think about. <clears throat> All right, and what else we got here? What else we got? Where else we got? I think that was it, guys. Hey, there's a bonus topic if you guys want to talk about uh, how Tetsuya Nomura is interested in LucasArts. Yes. I'm literally Art falling products. asleep yes. at my computer. Three over, three over one. We're we're in there. Wake yeah. that ass. Up. Oh, I'm sorry. Kingdom Hearts bores you. No, I think this. I think I think this is what people um, Disney needs to do with their with their vault that they they that they that they, that they own now. They need to flex it. Um, there was also talk about uh, Infinity. I mean, what is it? What is it? what? Infinite. Disney Infinite that they okay yeah yeah Disney Infinite they are about I to go into the, they're they're go ahead they're about yeah, to go into they're about what? to go into their vault and take out the Star Wars um they're about to go and grab Star Wars models and Marvel models because wow. save Dis it Disney has a huge vault by itself yes now that they own Lucas Arts they own all the rights to every character in fucking Lucas Arts collection. And they own every Marvel hero that has not been po and supervillain that has not been posted for mm. all eyes to see. There's no way you cannot like use it. You ha like your character development now is at at its peak because you can play around and mix and match all so much stuff. I, I feel that if Disney or, or if 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 he does not take advantage of this and keeps it standard uh, the way it, it was, then. It's it's like having it's like having a whole bunch of money and only spending a little bit. Just, just don't do it. You guys spend it all. Mm. Got it. Um, Demi, do you do you uh hope to see any anything from Lucas Arts or Marvel and Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy Fifteen? Well, actually, Absolutely. not even Final Fantasy Fifteen. There's Kingdom Hearts. No, what do you want to see I... in there? What do you think? Like it, the whole reason like playing kingdom hearts in the first place like you see all of these other characters and like that's what like motivates you you know you're like i need to see more and like it's interesting seeing those personalities interact with like your video game character and stuff like if i see fucking star wars characters and then like any even marvel characters, like it's just like it's doing a big service to the, mm -hmm. to people and people that wouldn't have played kingdom hearts are going to pick it up now so, like, trust me, you, the, when you first see, like, Nightmare Before Christmas and Kingdom Hearts 1, you're just like, what? Oh, my God, Jack Skeleton. Oh yeah, God. like, when I played They need Kingdom to make Hearts, the game longer, played... that's it. Oh, that's... yeah, absolutely. Because I beat both of them in a day. <laughs> both of them in the same... See, you, no, you're, you're not a... You're not... But you're not... Yo, there's a difference between the casual market and then you, Kev. Kev, you will... And, and in any of us, we will sit there for hours that we probably don't even want to say in public... Sit there. Like, I beat it in four hours. There's no way you beat the game in four hours. Four hours. Mean, skip yeah. every cutscene. Uh -huh. First Why one. Skip the cutscene. Because I beat the I game cried. already. I see, see, you cried. beat the game already. You beat yeah, the game how long already. did it take you to play? You're talking about your first second playthrough. Well, the first time I played it, I got everything. <laughs> I got all the keyblades. I got the so ultimate keyblade. So it took you a while. Yeah, that's, that's different. Point. I'm talking about in the sense of longevity of the actual game. You mean replay value? Yes. Uh, okay. More, okay. Okay. You mean more replay value. Okay, there you go. Because that didn't make any sense. The game was actually, I felt that the game was long enough. It needs to be And longer. then the second one, it was just like, eh. It, like, it wasn't no, there's replay value now. They're gonna, they're adding they're adding harder difficulties. For the, for the people that think the game is too kiddie, there's like, if you want to test your skills, there's like never like level the up only mode. The only hard part out of both Kingdom Hearts was Sephiroth, Sephiroth in the mm -hmm. first one. In the uh, Hercules yeah, arena, that was, fucking hard. that was the only hard boss. That's why they're re-releasing it, and now they're gonna have harder bosses than Sephiroth, way harder bosses that you probably think is is impossible to beat, but it's not. But it is. So, but it is. That's what these re-releases. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're gonna have like later later on in the future. They're gonna have some Kingdom Hearts three final mix plus remix or whatever. Um, what if you had but, to fight Darth Maul? What's up? That's Darth possible. Vader. <laughs> well, fight we, Darth we'll Vader, and there. he's ju we'll he's just there. as hard as fucking Sephiroth. Um, but you know that that would be oh. interesting. I mean, now I'm interested in Lucas Arts now because I want I want to fight Darth Darth Maul and Darth Vader and uh. Right. Well, I guarantee you, you fight Arts. the Sith Sith Lord. Grievous, please let me fight Grievous. And Yoda and Yoda <laughs> oh, is the guy you get to summon. Yoda, like, Yoda, Yoda, and and Mickey are gonna have conversations. I just want Ewoks. Can I just get an Ewok? That's about it. 
and then I'm happy. Sure. I don't know. No, you you, the whole game can be can be in the LucasArts universe instead of Disney. So, <laughs> or maybe maybe, no, maybe I since still love my Emmy some Disney. Hold on, hold on. Maybe since they have LucasArts and Marvel now, may, maybe Tetsuya can make a whole game that's like Kingdom Hearts, but of course they're gonna have, he's gonna have fresh new characters, a brand new IP in the in the LucasArts universe. So, no, it's gonna be his own universe, but you jump into the LucasArts universe for different reasons. That can be a whole another IP. Who knows? But um. All right, guys. That, that that's that's pretty much it. That pretty much covers everything. I think we've. How long has it been? An hour and what now? Twenty. Hour and twenty. Alex, you still alive? Sterling. I think he died. So, um, all right, everybody. Anybody have uh, Kevin and Demi? You guys have any uh, last thoughts about the, uh, anything else you want to say? Nah. That's pretty much it. <clears throat> Viewers. Anybody else have anything to say? Let me read you anything. You, Tiso has something to say. He said, "I just gotta say," and then I think he's typing now. All right. Stop. He said, Kill yourself. Stop. He said, "Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on Wii U is too legit." All right, we're gonna end, and I'm not gonna comment on that. So, you guys, <laughs> uh, everyone, have a good night. Uh, thank you guys for watching again of our uh, ranting gamers. We'll see you all next week with some more interesting topics. You guys have a good night. Peace, Alex. I'm, we're gonna need you to to turn. The broadcast. Up. Yes, I'm turning it off now. I okay. just got back upstairs. Sorry, everybody. I had to run downstairs. I was, I, was about to, I was about to press broadcast, and I was like, wait, I'm Wait not a speaking. minute. All right, everybody.